In this video, what I'm going to be doing is addressing something you are probably going to see a little bit more in my videos, and that is uh, screen recordings from Mac OS. When it comes to a lot of the work I do, whether that be video production, general research, messing around in my home lab, I often find myself doing a lot of it with this uh, beat up M1 MacBook Air. Or if she's not using it, sitting right here at my wife's desktop computer or her new iMac and using that. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the why, what I still hate, and what kind of drove my preferences. But before we do all that, I do need to thank the sponsor of today's video, which is FlexiSpot and their E7 Plus standing desk. I've had many standing desks, and this is by far the best built, most stable, and strongest desk I have ever used. Unlike any other I've used, this one has a dual leg design with two on each side, making stability rather impressive. It has a keypad that you can use for your adjustments with a screen to give you what the specific height is. You could set presets and quickly enter standing and sitting modes. The capacity load is 540 pounds, making it perfect if you have your computer, multiple monitors, and a bunch of other stuff that sits on your desk. And just overall, it looks sleek. It is the desk that is currently in our family room with the iMac on it. And just the whole setup is beautiful. I went with the white tabletop, but there are a bunch of different colors and top types that you can pick from, or you could just buy the adjustable base by itself. I personally paired up this desk with their C7 adjustable computer chair, and that thing is awesome. It's mesh. So much of it is adjustable so I could get kind of the perfect adjustment for my body so my posture is actually kind of decent. And with pricing, FlexiSpot is incredibly affordable, especially compared to some of their competition. So if you want to learn more, check out some of their products and maybe customize your very own desk, there's going to be a link down below. So to be clear, I never actually bought myself an Apple product other than like an iPhone probably a decade ago. I purchased my wife this MacBook Air for a school quite a while ago. You've probably seen it a couple times here and there on the channel with me kind of tinkering and doing some tests. And then recently, probably about a month ago, we went ahead and ordered her this desktop computer. Oh God! <laughs> which this is a brand new iMac uh, M3, substantial upgrade compared to this M1. Granted, this M1 is still a phenomenal computer. The reason why we went with all this with her is she's just heavily invested into the Apple ecosystem. iPhone, Apple Watch, iMac, it all kind of works well together for her. Personally, I don't use the iCloud integrations or anything like that, but I do have to say, after using this Air for quite a while and kind of playing around with this when she's not using it, uh, I'm confidently going to say the next kind of personal computer that I purchase is probably going to be a Mac. In the past, in the not too distant past, before they came out with their Apple Silicon, buying a Macintosh computer was purely just a waste of money. You could get a Windows computer with basically the exact same specifications for in most cases considerably cheaper. The only real reason to purchase a Macintosh would be to be in their ecosystem or if you're just impressed with the build quality of their laptops. But that has completely changed with the introduction of the Apple Silicon and their M series processors. Performance is incredibly competitive, if not in some cases better than you get from, for example, Intel at a similar price point. I mean, this thing right here, you could get the M1 Air brand new on Amazon for around $700. And if you're looking anywhere around that price range for a laptop and you want something that's kind of thinner, powerful, lightweight, ridiculously good battery life, it's kind of silly to go with anything else. Then going from the M1 to the M3 is nothing short of impressive. Greater speed, more cores, better graphics. This upgrade here is a clear sign that Apple is doubling down and it's it's really just setting the stage where Macs and their kind of ARM architecture that they're working with is probably gonna to continue to outpace their competitors. Primarily in that ARM kind of sphere of computers where you want something incredibly powerful, incredibly energy efficient, it's just really hard to beat. Now, of course, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. There are still a ton of things that absolutely suck about Apple and their Mac computers. My second choice for getting a personal computer is probably a framework laptop because of how upgradable, interchangeable a lot of the components are. That is something you're absolutely not going to get from these computers. What you buy is what you get forever. But I'm gonna talk about the hardware more in just a sec. The one bad thing I really wanna to touch on is the software. <laughs> if you're familiar with the uh, Chris Titus Tech channel, he did a uh, Video similar to this one, but his video was a joke. He uploaded a video on him switching to macOS with the uh, 
with a specific upload date we were in for a treat, and he did a wonderful job of demonstrating window management on Mac. It is disgusting. Snapping of the windows is a basic functionality that should be on every computer, but for some reason isn't on these things. You can split screen windows. There are hotkeys to do a lot of various window movements, but just general click, drag, throw over, that's not a thing. We try to maximize a window. It goes into full screen mode. So for example, if I open up Microsoft Edge here and I click on the full screen, it gets rid of all the windows and actually puts this in full screen. Granted, if I kind of hover over here and get that to come down, we could take this out. A double click of the title bar does work. And there are some customizations to make it a little bit better. His video is a little exaggerated on how bad it actually is, but it's still horrible. <laughs> Window management on macOS just feels clunky, outdated, especially for the elegant, smooth software that they try to portray themselves to be. Uh, using it doesn't feel that way all the time. Navigating between different desktops isn't as seamless as it can be. While Mission Control does allow you to see all your open windows and desktops, it's not always the most efficient way to switch between tasks. Now you can use third-party applications and tools to better customize and improve this. I haven't personally dived into any of that. A lot of the better ones that I see recommended are paid pieces of software, which isn't generally my preference. And the fact that you do need to kind of lean on those third-party solutions to make up for the shortcomings of the operating system really just speaks volumes. If you do have a suggestion, uh, please leave it down below. That'd be greatly appreciated. Now, another thing to mention, and probably one of the biggest cons, is the overpriced upgrades I mentioned earlier. How a framework laptop would be my preference, and that's because of how easily upgradable it is. These ones are not. So you get what you get, like I said, and to get what you want to get initially is crazy expensive. Apple is known for charging exorbitant prices for upgrades that are relatively inexpensive on other platforms. For example, increasing the RAM or upgrading the storage on your Mac can cost significantly more than what we all know it's worth. The base model M1 Air only has 8GB of RAM and actually wrote this script on a Windows machine and at the time of writing the script, the computer was using 11 gigabytes of RAM just with a couple edge tabs open. Apple claims to be superior at managing RAM on their operating system, but who cares? Eight gigabytes of RAM is a low amount of RAM. Even 10 years ago in 2014, that wasn't that much RAM. 16 gigs of RAM should be the base. And at least for this one, I actually upgraded it to 16 gigs because I want it to last a while. It was very expensive. <laughs> And after upgrading the RAM and moving to the mid-range of their lineup, uh, I couldn't afford to upgrade the storage. So this has 16 gigs of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. And the only reason that was okay with me was because for any big files, I have a network attached storage that we use. So I don't really store too much locally on these computers anyways, but still, God damn. Any computer more than a grand should have at least 512. Additionally, it's no secret that gaming on Mac devices is a major downside. The selection of games is limited and the performance for gaming just isn't on par with what you could get from like mid-range PCs. The situation is gradually improving, however, as Mac or as Apple matures their silicon and developers create more games optimized for Mac OS. Still, if you're a gamer, it's really just better to build your own computer or even just use a game console like Xbox, PlayStation, whatever it may be. Personally, I never game on these things. I specifically reserve that for either the Steam Deck or a uh, Xbox console we have. So those are the main cons. And there's one thing that has gotten better and gotten to the point where I'm comfortable enough with it now where it's switched from a negative to a pro, and that is virtualization. If you haven't noticed, I've had a Fedora kind of spun up here, and it has been fantastic. It's smooth, it's snappy, it works great. Look at that, I have good window management in a virtual machine in the Mac OS. And this is UTM, this is free software. You can use something like Parallels, which is paid, which works really good if you're trying to virtualize Windows. But if you're just trying to virtualize ARM versions of Linux, UTM is phenomenal. You can also emulate uh, x86 architecture, granted it is super slow, doesn't perform well, 
but it's possible. But ARM has developed and improved enough where there are a ton of options with all the big distributions where I can actually run Linux virtual machines on UTM with absolutely no issue. And performance is really good too. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think multi-core performance on Mac or on this M3 uh, iMac gets about 13,000, which is really good. It's the best, at least best performance computer I've ever owned. And this Fedora virtual machine, I think scored about eight or 9,000, which is still one of the best performance systems that I've tested using Geekbench. I'll put the actual numbers up on screen so you can see those for yourself. But the difference in running the test on the native hardware versus a virtual machine on it is really, really impressive. Another thing that has gone really good is using OBS to screen record, live stream, and a lot of the things that I need to do. Uh, when this M1 laptop first came out, it really wasn't that good. You had to use the x86 version, which to Apple's credit, they made all those applications run fairly well on this thing. But now that OBS has their own Apple Silicon version and they've been updating it for a couple of years, I have had no issues. And as a matter of fact, I've had the most stable OBS Studio experience as compared to any Linux system or even any Windows system that I've ever ran. So in conclusion, I'm slowly starting to recommend Macintosh laptops uh, more than I thought I ever would. If anybody's going to get a laptop, getting a $700 M1 Air is a good bet, especially if you own an iPhone, then it's really good. I have a Google Pixel 6. I'm not involved in the Apple ecosystem at all. I thought they would be way more pushy in trying to get me to use it, but like compared to OneDrive or some of uh, the applications on Windows, they're not nearly as pushy. You do have the little iCloud link, but you never have to click it. I removed a lot of the kind of custom Apple like iMessage and a variety of their tools from like my dock, for example. Apple really doesn't try to get in your way to push you into iCloud or anything like that unless if you're using an iPhone. <laughs> They're real pushy on iPhones. Like I said, my wife has one and I set up a Synology Photos so she backs up all her stuff to there, but probably once a year I have to go through and delete things off her phone so she stops getting all those <laughs> messages trying to get her to pay Apple an extra $2 a month. But yeah, I, I do find myself grabbing this thing far more than anything else, far more than any Windows laptop I own. It's cool, it's quiet. I can work on it all day and I'll plug it in at the end of the day, but it will get me through the entire day of doing like YouTube, some video production, web browsing, everything. Am I gonna buy myself a new Mac right now? No. I just bought this thing. I come up here and use it to use DaVinci Resolve, but downstairs I'm still running. I have a Windows desktop, a Linux uh, gaming laptop. So I'm gonna continue using those, but I'm really thinking I'm gonna end up getting myself like a uh, like a beefy Mac mini to run down there and do a lot of my screen recording on. But but we'll see, we'll see. With that, let me know what you guys think down below. What are you currently running? If you're running Linux, beautiful. What distro are you running? If you made the switch over to Mac or you switched away from it to some, uh, like a framework computer, which is another one I'm incredibly interested in, uh, please let me know that as well. And with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day and good Bye.